Great international conspiracies unearthed in the spying game. CIA agents posing as buyers for other countries were sent to Warsaw and other communist capitals to buy weapons for the Mujahideen. Trace the Holocaust from its genesis in the Nazis, a warning from history. In the 12 years of his rule in Germany, Hitler produced the biggest confusion in government that has ever existed in a civilized state. Come fly with BBC World as we take off into the wild blue yonder for Aviation Week. From Icarus to the stealth bomber, follow dreamers and engineers as they soar into the ether. And come back down to earth as football fever sweeps the globe in July. Follow the passion and the broken dreams of the beautiful game with Euro 2000. All life is here. July highlights on BBC World. You're watching BBC World. Another arrest of the deaths of Chinese immigrants. European Union leaders clinch a deal on savings tax despite Austria's attempts to block it. And Belgium says Britain didn't do enough to stop the hooligans travelling to Euro 2000. This is BBC News. Hello, I'm Gavin Esler. We're broadcasting from our Westminster studios because of power problems in and around BBC Television Centre in West London. A man's been arrested by Dutch police in connection with the deaths of 58 Chinese immigrants. The victims were discovered when a lorry was inspected at the port of Dover in southern England. They all appear to have suffocated. Two survivors television output. The television centre was evacuated and staff set up an emergency newsroom here in Westminster. Now, before I press on, another apology for the uh, rather gloomy lighting. We've got severe power problems here in West London, so if I disappear from your screens, uh, you'll know why. In the meantime, we'll carry... BBC News tonight making its own news. Hugh Edwards was presenting BBC One's main bulletin when things started to go wrong. The final moment came a few minutes later during a report on Euro 2000. Bypasses Belgian border controls. Screens went blank as the power failed. Staff were immediately ordered to leave television centre as alarm systems were also affected. News 24 was among the casualties, so too were network radio services. From a given moment in the show, we were expecting to fall off air, as we say simply because we were warned that the generator was having problems and that it might just pack up for good. Um, and when that happened, it happened during a report, um, and it just went, and there was a huge fizzle in the studio. The lights just uh, disappeared uh, with a big bang, and um, we were left there sitting in glorious isolation in complete darkness, from six million viewers to none in one second. It was um, quite an experience. Fire crews were called as the BBC's own backup generator burst into flames. This unprecedented loss of television and radio services took everyone from the Director General downwards by surprise. 
I don't think you can account for losing all your power and then your backup generator is not working. But I mean, what we've, uh, we'll obviously review it again and say what went wrong. I mean, there are certain things that it's clearly haven't worked properly, like the computer systems here aren't working properly, they ought to be. Staff had to be bused to other studios in London to prepare programmes. Regional output was largely unaffected. Few people can remember a time when practically all the BBC's network services went off air at the same time. An investigation has now been launched into why the original power system failed and why the BBC's own backup system also couldn't cope. Duncan Kennedy, BBC News, Television Centre. China has turned... Liverpool Rasta poet Levi Tafari saw Toxteth as misery. Ethiopia was his dream. Feeling seven years younger, a bitter. But was it heaven or was it hell? From Babylon to Zion at these times on BBC World. Now on BBC World, the essential guides to all the latest gadgets, games and computer news. It's Click Online. This is a change to our published schedule. Thousands of MS sufferers are set to be denied an expensive drug. The BBC's found out a new ruling says it's not cost-effective. Desperate and doomed, these are thought to be the Chinese who died at Dover. And the penalty that put England out of Euro 2000. And another step for Charles and Camilla, out together tonight, officially. Good evening. Thousands of people Public roll. tonight after a huge power cut hit West London. Programs on all radio and television networks have been disrupted as thousands of staff had to be evacuated from television centre. The initial fault was at a substation, then the BBC's backup generator caught fire. One way or another, the Old Trafford Stadium, the mecca that marked this the discussion. Over now to Sophie. 
Michael, thank you. Last look at the headlines this morning. And thankfully, no violence last night, just disappointment. Football fans are returning home after England's 3-2 defeat against Romania in Belgium. Leading figures from the world of fashion, media and magazines will be joining Tessa Jowell, the Minister for Women, at the first Body Image Summit today. The aim is to try and reduce the pressure on young women to be thin. And thousands celebrated the summer solstice at Stonehenge last night. Trouble in the past had meant the site was closed to revellers for 16 years, but this year the festivities passed off peacefully. Now the headlines where you are. Thank you, good morning. Wenwood Scrubs awaits its fate today in a new report by the Inspector of Prisons. Last year, Sir David Ransbottom warned that if the prison regime wasn't radically overhauled, he might recommend its closure. Police investigating the disappearance of Susie Lamplew say a witness has come forward with important information. The estate agent went missing 14 years ago when she went to show a client around a house in Fulham. The witness says he saw a woman matching her description struggling to get out of a car near the Fulham Palace Road. Bad feeling towards immigrants is being blamed for a low turnout at a vigil for 58 stowaways found dead in a lorry container in Dover. Only 30 people turned up at the prayer meeting last night. Leading think tank has said Ken Livingstone's demand for London's public spending to be linked to the amount of tax Londoners pay would make poor areas even worse off. The Institute for Public Policy Research says the city would get richer at the expense of places like Tower Hamlets. That's it. Now back to Breakfast News. And Peter Cockcroft now with the weather, Peter. Thanks, Sophie. Well, any sick parrots could probably have a flutter down at uh, Ascot today. Our tip is Welsh wind. It is going to be a windy day. We can take a look at the view across uh, London this morning, and you can see the clouds beginning to break up there. If we take a look at the view in Belfast, we can see much brighter skies, but by the afternoon, we're going to find these strong, blustery winds if we come back into the studio, blowing in a fair number of showers. Those strong winds affecting the Severn and Avon bridges, so problems there for high-sighted vehicles. Now back to Sophie and Michael. Peter, thank you. And that's it from us for this morning. Back tomorrow at the same time. Join us then. Don't miss it. See you then. Goodbye. Bye-bye. England fans travel home dejected but without causing any violence after their team is forced out of Euro 2000. New evidence that men who rape women after drugging them could be working in organised gangs. And it's access to all areas at Stonehenge for the first public summer solstice celebrations there in more than a decade. Is BBC News 24. I'm Louise Minchin. And I'm Chris Eakin. Yes, good morning to you. It is News 24. We've been off air for a while, as you may have noticed, due to the electricity problems uh, which hit West London and hit much of the BBC service overnight. Our apologies for that. News 24's equipment was particularly badly hit by various surges in power and so on overnight. There's been much fiddling with fuses and so on, and we are now back on air. Our thanks to Michael and Sophie for covering for us. But for now, we are back on air. <laughs> Well, the darkness here has been much in keeping with the night of disappointment and despair for England. Fans have been returning home from Belgium after the Euro 2000 dream was shattered. A last-minute penalty gave Romania a 3-2 victory.